Hi, this is Rick Kolk, and today I'm going to discuss VizSim Embedded Modeling, Fundamental Concepts, Part 1. This video will cover the following topics. VizSim Compound Blocks, Model Diagram Levels, Compound Block Pins, Scalar, Vector, and Matrix Data and Conversion, VizSim Variables and Scoping, and Built-in VizSim Variables. VizSim compound blocks are used to encapsulate models or parts of models into hierarchical sublevel blocks. Compound blocks save space, partition calculations, hide unnecessary detail, they can protect calculations, they can be independently scheduled for execution, and they can be easily replicated. The inputs to a compound block and the outputs from a compound block are called pins. Let's look at a simple equation y equals 4 times u1 minus 3 times u2. u1 and u2 are the inputs, y is the output. And let's create this calculation in a compound block named calculate y. To create this equation, I will need two gains and a sum injunction. The gains are available under blocks, arithmetic, gain. I'll place one on the screen, control shift left button to duplicate it. I will also need a summing junction located under blocks, arithmetic, summing junction. I will define the first gain as 4, which is the gain on U1, and the second gain as 3, which is the gain on U2. Connect them to the summing junction. Use control right button to toggle the sign on the summing junction. Lasso the entire collection of blocks. Right button, create compound block, and we'll name this compound block calculate y. Our diagram now has two levels, the top level, which we're currently at, and by right-clicking on the compound block, I enter into the next lower level. Right-click on the background allows me to move back up to the top level. Our calculate y compound block has two inputs and one output. All signals are scalars. We can convert signals from scalar to vector or matrix using two VizSim blocks, scalar to vec and vec to scalar. Both are located under the block annotation menu. Let's use the scalar to vector block to convert our two scalar inputs to a vector input. In order to do that, I will select the block and define the number of rows to be two. I will attach it to my compound block after I delete one of the two inputs. Connecting it, you'll notice that I have a bold line instead of a narrow line that you see here, which signifies this is a vector or a matrix. Going inside the Calculate Y block, I need to unload the vector into scalars, which in turn will be fed through the gains. I do that with the companion block, which is a vector to scalar block. Again, I need to dimension it correctly. In this case, it's a two by one. Connect it to my vector input and then connect the scalar outputs in turn to the gains. This sim variables are used to create wireless connections for improved readability and conservation of screen space. VizSim variables are always connected to the pins of either compound or other VizSim blocks. VizSim variables may be scoped in any of three ways. Number one, diagram or global scoping means the variable is available at all levels of the model. Number two, level scope means the variable is available only at the level in the model in which it was defined. Level scope variables are always preceded with a colon. And finally, definition scope variables are available at the level in which they're defined and all sublevels. A definition scope variable is the name preceded by two columns. This sim provides eight built-in variables that output either a pulse or a value for special simulation events or settings. This sim built-in variables begin with a dollar sign and they're accessed through the variable block. The variable block located under block annotation variable. If I open the block up, I can see these variables listed initially in this block, first pass, code gen, and so on, all preceded with a dollar sign. We'll be using several of the built-in variables. The dollar first pass variable is important. It outputs a single pulse at the start of a simulation. 
Similarly, the dollar last pass variable outputs a pulse during the last step of the simulation. And also at the bottom, the dollar time step variable outputs the value of the simulation time step in seconds.